In this presentation, we are going to look at standardization uh, of variables. Now, so where we left off the last time around, we were looking at the Euclidean distance and the squared Euclidean distance and also the city block distance. So we're just going to go back to the Euclidean distance here. So let us consider uh, measuring the distances between two points using three continuous variables, de uh, pollution, depth and temperature. And let us suppose that a difference of 4.1, okay, so in, in terms of pollution, a difference in uh, of 4.1 in terms of pollution is quite large and unusual whereas a difference of 48 in terms of depth is large but not, not particularly unusual you wouldn't really be amazed by it so we have two cases here case 1 and case 2 so we have pollution there at 6.0 and a depth of 51 the temperature more is more or less the same for both variables so we won't really uh, look at that or that won't come into play that much for this these particular cases but we have a difference here an absolute difference of 48 and an, an absolute difference here in, uh, in terms of depth of 48 in terms of pollution of 4.1 now let's just suppose for example that a difference of 4.1 in terms of pollution is really 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 large and unusual whereas a depth of 48 in terms of depth is not particularly unusual it's large but not particularly unusual you wouldn't be surprised by it so what would happen if we apply the squared Euclidean or the Euclidean distance or the squared Euclidean distance even to as also to measure the distance between the two cases so we have we're just going to use those three uh, numeric variables there so 6.0 minus 1.9 squared okay that's 4.1 squared 50 my 59 or 51 minus 99 squared and 3.0 minus 2.9 squared that gives us the square root of 16.81 plus 2304 plus 0 0.01 uh, the squared Euclidean distance is 2320.82 which is 48.17 now you can sort of see very clearly that the depth measurement there is dominating the calculation okay it's pretty much the Euclidean distance is made up of almost could uh, entirely this Euclidean distance based on this formula is made up of almost entirely of depth whereas pollution and uh, temperature hardly get a look in at all so so the, uh, the uh, as uh, does say the, the the difference between here is, uh, these two values is 48 so the contribution of the second variable to this calculation is absolutely enormous so you could say that the distance is practically uh, just the absolute difference in the terms of depth values uh, 51 minus 49, 48. 51 minus 40, uh, 99, which is 48, uh, with only tiny contributions to pollution and temperature. So, what's the problem here? These three different, these three variables are in completely different scales of measurement, and larger depth values have large differences, so they dominate the calculation of the Euclidean distance. So, what we could do? There's an, multiple approaches here. I'm going to talk about the most commonly sort of used one, but there are actually other ones as well beyond this. So the first one, it's essentially we're going to scale them, and the the, one, the most common uh, approach to scaling is standardization. Uh, standardization, if you're familiar with the uh, t-tests from uh, Statistics 101, that's exactly what we're doing. So one approach here is to take the standardization is uh, one approach here is to uh, use standardization, which is necessary to balance out the contributions. And the conventional way to do and it, uh, and the conventional way to do this is to transform the variables so they all have the same variance, which is one. So what we do at the uh, we also center the differences at their mean. The centering is not absolutely necessary for calculating differences, but the, it, it, it it makes the variables easy to manage and gives them all a um, a uh, a mean value of zero. So what you do essentially is for every observed value you subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation and you can do this automatically with um, R so there's a scale function in there. So here's the same calculations again so essentially for this variable here let's suppose that the mean is of all for all of the pollution values, not just these two, for all of the pollution values, all the, all the other cases that are not mentioned here, so let's suppose it is 4.517 and let's suppose the standard deviation is 2.141 okay and likewise the mean uh, depth is 74 and the standard deviation is 15.615 likewise 3.05 and 2.81 so the, both of these values are quite close to the mean so what we're going to do here is standardize them okay standardize the values so the standardized value here is not 0.693 and for the other case it's minus 1.222 
okay likewise here minus 1.501 and 1.573 still a big difference between the two but you see the absolute difference there is only three whereas the absolute difference here is about 1.8 no, 1.9 and this is not much at all okay so this is this uh, Euclidean distance when you uh, square it so essentially the same calculation again this minus this square it plus this minus this square that this minus this square that and add them all up together and when you standardize them you get a squared Euclidean distance or a Euclidean distance of 3.639 but let's look at the squared Euclidean distance it is 13.242 okay now the depth measurement is still dominating okay you, there's no perfect way to stop one variable dominating it because it, it might be still an important variable all the same or but it's still uh, there's a uh, greater contributions coming f uh, from uh, to the Euclidean distance coming from the other two variables so they're more in play they are for vari uh, variation in terms of pollution and depth have more influence in terms of the squared Euclidean, uh, the Euclidean distance the distance between any two cases okay so that's you know so that's essentially just a sort of pen and paper example of why you would do it uh, pollution and temperature have greater contributions than before but it's still depth plays the largest role okay that's not, not nothing to be too worried about uh, okay so that's stuff from the last so what we're going to do here is use the scale function okay and what we're going to do here there's one called the date I'm going to talk about these a couple of things that I'm going to sort of measure, mention later on in future presentations for example the daisy function will all automatically perform standardization but what we're going to do here is use this function called the scale function and essentially what we do is pass a matrix or data frame to be standardized with two optional uh, vectors or as essentially the first thing is the first thing we're going to do is the center, okay, and that is the the um, how you center them, okay. And the last time around, what we did is we subtracted by the mean, and the second thing we're going to do is we are going to scale them, and it's essentially what we're going to divide, so it, uh, by to sort of scale them down. Uh, in the last example, we used the mean and standard deviation there, so the center and scale best example by the way that's the default setting by the way uh, is the mean and standard deviation implicit in this is sorry let's go back there implicit in that is the notion that they are uh, normally distributed okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scale the car cars data set okay couple of things there I'm going to sort of skip over past that actually and just get into the data. So uh, we're going to scale it on the cars data set. So what I'm going to do is take out the two non-numeric uh, um, columns. Let's just actually go back to R here. Uh, we haven't had a look at R yet. So this is the data set we're going to use. Now uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to subtract the two. Uh, first off, an important thing to do is to take out the um, Categor or the categorical or um, text data. So we have country and car, which is not particularly important. For this exercise, I will leave in cylinders, but there is a case for removing that as well. But just for the sake of simplicity, what I'm going to do is take that out. So what I'm going to do here is I, I'm going to do something different. I suppose I want to standardize by subtracting the median and then divide them by the mean abs average deviation. Okay. So these are different types and just essentially it's different it's mean and standard deviation is yeah, I could go that route what I might do just for a bit of fun is just show how I can do something else uh, median and the MAD so first off what we're going to do is we are going to use the for two vec uh, we're going to sort of pare down our data set here so cars.use, by the way if you're not familiar with R, that dot doesn't mean anything, it just sort of makes it easier to read and that just gets rid of the first uh, the text data, so we only have the index and then six numeric variables Okay. 
So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this apply function and I'm going to get the median for each column okay of hierarchy of of my data set. So uh, if you're not familiar with the apply function it's really really handy. Essentially what it does is I'm going to apply this function here median along the columns to if I was going along the rows it'd be one one the axis one is for rows axis two is for columns on this data set cars use okay and this is just going to compute uh, the medians for me okay so let's do that uh, I'm not going to uh, deal with uh, apply here but it is actually quite handy so there we go it's actually just a way of calculating all of the medians of each uh, column okay let's have a look at it there so it's the medians of each of the uh, four, four, six numeric variables there okay so the next thing we're going to do is going to do something similar is we are going to get the MADs again something the same way the, ca the command there is MAD MAD And let's look at that. The MADs, there we go. Those are the mean absolute or the mean uh, average deviations from uh, for it's a, that's just just a sort of measure of dispersion that uh, the mean the MAD. Uh, so it's a sort of uh, non-parametric. You sort of use it in, uh, along with the median. Uh, let's go on to this now. What we're going to do here is use the scale function. Okay. So, uh, use the scale function. So we are going to scale it. We're going to rescale our uh, our data set, and we are going to call it car use. I'm going to change the name here to cars scaled. Okay, so it's going to be different from the notes. Uh, so uh, what am I scaling? I'm use the data set I'm using. So that's cars without the uh, text variables. The center is the medians. Now that medians there is that is that a vector of medians that I've just created. Okay. Scale is looking for a vector of scale variables, and there I'm supplying my MADS vector, my vector of uh, mean average deviation. So let's have a look at that. Cars scaled. There we go. Uh, this gives me all the information at the bottom, the attribute information. This gives me the the. Uh, this is sort of retains the um, at the bottom here is it, this retains all the information about how it was scaled. But let's just go to the top. There we go. That's the first six variables there, and you actually I'll just change it to. And what I'm going to do here is just side by side have the first so car use this is the first four variables so they get transformed into these variables are these sorry that's the first four cases and they get transformed into these values here so what was 16.9 now in when you scale it we get a measure of minus 0 0.84022 and all that okay that's um I'm just going to see if I have any more to say on this. I don't think I do. Yeah, that's what you get there. No. We're going to move on to proximity matrices and how to use them, what they actually mean now. We know how to calculate them. We know how to scale them. One thing actually I should say actually is that there is a bit of when to scale, when not to scale, how to scale them. There's a sort of bit of a, uh, a black art there. There's diff all the ways you can sort of scale your variables. You might sort of... Uh, terms uh, put them in terms of percentages of the absolute va uh, value or the maximum value something like that uh, but for the sake of brevity I'm just going to deal with the scale function and then I'll call, probably come back to that in again how other ways of transforming your data okay so that's the scale function and standardization